Well, welcome everyone. Good evening. I know there's some people still out getting coffee and such, but we are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Vineyard. Um, whether you are joining us in person tonight or Facebook Live, we are glad that you have made us part of your Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Uh, my name is Brett. I'm the pastor here at the Vineyard, um, and it's good to be together. If you are visiting with us for the first time um, here in the service tonight, we have a gift for you. We would love for you to take advantage of our gift bag. Um, there are some out in the lobby on the connection counter. Uh, got some information about us here at the Vineyard along with um, a gift and some other stuff. So check that out. Grab one on your way out this evening if you didn't get one. Um, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed the service this evening. Sherry was your greeter tonight. So if you have any questions throughout the evening, check out um, Find Sherry and she will do her best to help you. Um, and if you are visiting with us for the first time online, we would love to hear from you in the comment section of the video. So just say, hi, I am a first time visitor. Um, we'd love to hear where you're visiting from. If you would grab your bulletin, we're going to go through that with a few announcements real quick. Um, first of all, in the bulletin, you'll find a giving envelope. If you would like to give a gift to the vineyard, you can put it in that envelope, seal it up and put it in the little basket on the back table. We appreciate all those gifts. Um, you also have a connection card. Uh, and if you just set that card aside for right now, we will go through that together in just a little bit. Um, looking in your bulletin on the left hand side, some things that are going on. First of all, this is a big week at the vineyard. Um, we are starting off our connection groups. We have groups meeting Monday through Thursday. Um, so real quick, we have a men's group that will be meeting on Monday night starting at 630. That will be at uh, Dave and Jen Bauer's house, um, fueling your RPMs. And so if, if, that, if you're a guy and you're interested in that group, uh, please mark on your connection card uh, that you want some more information about that. You can also sign up on the connection table um, over there on the side uh, of the sanctuary. Tuesday, Tuesday night is our potluck, potluck group. Um, this is a group where you bring a potluck. It's always a themed dinner. Um, you sit down, you have a meal together. And then uh, for the discussion time, there is a crock. You put any question you want, question about life, question about raising kids, question about retirement, question about scripture, any question you want gets thrown in a crock and then they, we just take it out, we read the question, we discuss it, um, and, and we just, it's a fluid discussion. So that meets Tuesdays at 6 p.m. at uh, Manga and Bumpa's house, also known as Connie and Mark Cooper. Um, at, uh, you can sign up on the connection card table. We also have a parenting teens group that will be meeting on Tuesday night at 6.30 at Zach and Lindsay Cuneo's house. If you've got teenagers or will have teenagers in the coming years, um, the Ruths and the Cuneos will be leading that together, and they've got a lot of teens between <laughs> the two of them. So they are the perfect group of people to lead that, that discussion. So that's Tuesdays. Wednesdays, Jody Spencer will be leading a women's group. Um, called they'll be doing a book study on missing pieces starting at 630 at her home in Mansfield Thursday is a feed your face and faith small group what that is very similar to potluck we'll bring a meal we'll sit down and have a meal together and then we will throw questions in a crock but those questions are going to be related to the book of the Bible we decide to study so our first meeting on Thursday we'll kind of figure out what book of the Bible we want to read uh, we will break that up over the period of our 10 weeks. And then as you read a chapter or the scripture, um, that night's discussion will revolve around um, the, the top, that scripture for the week. That is going to be hosted by Mackenzie Frank and Landon Kennedy uh, on, in Wellsboro. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up. And then Saturdays every other week, starting on the 20th at Kids Thousand Hills, we will have a pickup volleyball game so we'll just come we'll play a couple hours of volleyball at his thousand hills oh those times will vary just based on their availability um, but if you're interested sign up on your connection card for that Whew, that was a mouthful uh, get involved in connection groups if you haven't seen the video that we posted today uh, you can see that video on our facebook page you'll hear from all the group leaders about their group uh, and what they hope will happen over the course of our 10-week semester uh, February 19th, this Friday, men were throwing hatchets. If you have not signed up for hatchet throwing, you still have time. Mark it on your connection card. 
Uh, we'll leave from Wellsboro at 5.30. The cost is $35. Um, we'll have pizza. We'll throw axes. We'll lose no fingers. <laughs> and then, uh, last but not least, we have got ice skating at Colton Point Motel on February 27th. Pending weather, we'll do some ice skating. We'll do some ice fishing. We'll have a bonfire. Um, they've got a little hill there, I think, that we can that the kids can go down from the, the pond to the flat. Um, I think maybe we might try some winter volleyball. I can't think of anything better than volleyball and winter boots. <laughs> so we'll see. We're <laughs> supposed to get 12 inches of snow this week, so we'll see. But um, that's the 27th. If you don't want to ice skate, you don't want to ice fish, come for the fellowship and the roasted hot dogs and hot chocolate. Um, and then save the date. We've got some really fun things coming up. Uh, March 20th, it's actually the 20th, not the 27th. We had to change that date. We're doing a Vineyard Family Bowling Night at uh, Terrace Lanes in Troy. It'll be from 4 to 6. We'll have pizza, we'll have soda, and we have the whole bowling alley to ourselves just to do some bowling. Uh, April 2nd, we're going to have a Good Friday service right here. Uh, April 4th, Easter Sunday, we're going to have a sunrise service this year along with a regular morning service. And then, um, it's not in here, but I'm really excited about it, so I'm going to tell you. April 16th, we are doing a vineyard night out, adult night out, chop style. We have, uh, we have partnered with Rookie Cooks um, Academy. So couples, whether you're married or just friends, you come. We, um, we're gonna ha you'll get a basket, and the chef will walk around and try to help you cook the best meal that you can cook from that basket. It's really about the connection. I'll make sure there's food you can eat. So, <laughs> so April 16th, mark it on your calendars. That's going to be a really fun evening. At this point, you can pull out your connection card. Um, on the front of it, you can give us as much information as you want if you're visiting. Um, if you're a regular attender, just your name unless you have changed information. Um, on the back, a praise for prayer requests, praise reports, and event signups. So you can sign up for anything that we talked about. If you have a prayer request that we can pray for, we'd love to see that. And also a praise report. Um, if, if you've been praying for something and God has revealed something to you, um, we love to hear those things as well. So we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock and give you a time to fill that out. If you're tech savvy, on the bottom right, you can scan the QR code and fill that out electronically. Those connection cards, when they're completed, can be put in the big basket on the back table as you leave tonight. Also, if you are a youth and you want to go to youth group, they're meeting in the Grand Community Room upstairs right now at 6 p.m., so you are welcome to leave and head up there. Um, and just a reminder, we do have our open mic up here during the opening worship. If you have a testimony that you'd like to share of something maybe God has done or, or you've been praying for something and you've seen the answer to that, um, we want to encourage one another um, throughout this time. And so that mic is available. We just ask that you keep it uh, brief and limited so others can share. And uh, we're going to go ahead and worship. So if you'd all stand with us. Yes, hello. My name is... Oh, oh, let's get, is this on? There it is. My name is Carson. I'm one of the worship leaders here. And yeah, we're just going to kick it off with some worship. So yeah, I'd invite everyone here and everyone joining us on Facebook Live to kind of just... Um, open your hearts and let's raise the Lord up in prayer. <laughs>
fight for me and I'm gonna
I just wanted to share um, someone at the four o'clock service had asked for a testimony to be shared. Um, and I'm just going to read what they, they said, because I think this person, when we say about praising a God and raising a hallelujah in the storm, this person is doing just that. And so uh, they say, I can't count the number of times I have told people how wonderful our church is, not just because we have a great pastor, although we do, not because we have some wonderful building, because we don't, not because the church does, does lots of activities for its members and a ton of things for the community, although it does, and we all work together to draw others in to find the true meaning of having a relationship with Jesus. But that's still only a part of it. Most of all are the members of our church. Someone who visited our church once told Bob Morris that he was impressed with the church because we honestly seem to like each other. I thought that was such a nice compliment. But most recently, I realized how much we love and support each other. For those of you who aren't aware, I am dealing with stage four cancer. I'm going through chemo treatments and honestly don't know how long I will be around. Dave, my husband, gets very ill often, and although he has been to several doctors, they haven't found out what is wrong with him yet, and it's getting worse. Recently, we found out that our 46-year-old son has kidney cancer back, back after 17 years. He only has one kidney left. It's hard to stay positive and continue to trust all of this to God every day. Some days are better than others. However, through all this, we have been overwhelmed by the amount of love shown by family, friends, and my church family. I know there are a lot of people praying for us, and we appreciate all the prayers we can get right now. The amount of food, gifts, prayers, and just regular contact from our church family has been a huge uplift. There was even a group that came to clean my house while I was in the hospital. If we are overwhelmed by circumstances Satan has thrown at us, we are equally overwhelmed by the love, care, and response of my church family in our hour of need. I can't express enough how much we appreciate everything um, that so many of you have done. Without you, this would be so much harder. I just wanted to take this moment to thank you and let you know how much everything is appreciated and that I love you all. I ask that you continue to cover each other with prayer no matter how dire the circumstances, because Satan is roaming this earth now more than ever, and he will try to break our spirits, hoping we will turn against God. It's our job to hold each other fast to the very end. I pray for our entire church family that each of us will someday hear the words, good and faithful servant. With love, Carol and Dave Lieber. And I just wanted to share, too, Carol recently had a PET scan um, to find that the the spots on her liver have completely gone, and the tumor that she had has shrunk. So let's praise God for that.
this next song that we're doing, we sang again, la or we sang before last week, and John led that week, and, and some people afterwards were saying, wow, that was a great song. I've never heard that song before. Um, actually, it's kind of an oldie. Um, the print date on here is 2002, and it is a Vineyard original. And um, when this song was first introduced to me, when we fr first started coming into Vineyard, I remember specifically Bob saying that this song was very instrumental in speaking to him and Deb about doing this, about starting our church. So this is kind of a founding song, I would say, of our congregation. So enjoy. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time where we can gather and worship you. You are so, so worthy, God. We just pray that you will bless the rest of our service. 
bless Pastor Brett's message, Lord, as he is bringing your words through him to us. I pray that you would open every heart and mind and soul that's here today and who's with us online, God, that we would hear exactly what you have for us tonight. I thank you and I praise you. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Like I said earlier, happy Valentine's Day. Yay. Let me clue you in, though. Tomorrow is the better day because chocolate's half off. So, so celebrate tomorrow, and it will be a lot uh, better price for you. Um, so I have a question for you. How are we doing? How are we doing? I cha I'm changing it up a little bit today. Uh, since the beginning of the year, we've been talking about how are you doing, and we've spent several weeks kind of assessing the condition of our souls um, after a, a really difficult and challenging year. And so over those six weeks, we've discussed things like effectively navigating uncertainty and fear and change and loss. And last week was supposed to be the conclusion of our series uh, we talked about finding direction as individuals for the year ahead. And what we determined in that discussion was that God, we are God's work of art created to do good works at this moment in time. And in that message, um, I, I just kind of laid out this idea that we are masterpieces. We, we are God's work of art. And, and I encouraged you to kind of hold on to that truth as you move forward in the year to come. Uh, I, I think I said something like, let us, uh, what we know to be certain that God has put us in this place at this time to do good works, and let that be the guiding force as we navigate this year and, and the future. Uh, uh, though last week was supposed to be kind of the concluding message of the series, but I did hint, I gave you a hint that it might not be. Um, I really just had a sense this week that, that we needed to uh, have one more message in this series. And, and uh, for six weeks, we've asked, how are you doing? And, and we've been using the RPM method of assessing our relationships and our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health. Um, and, and I want to encourage you, don't stop asking yourself how you're doing. Don't stop rating yourself on that sliding scale. What we can do is we, we tend to just forget, oh, you know, that was, that was good for the six weeks. And then we move on to something else and we forget um, how important it is to check in on ourselves. And so let the most important question that you ask yourself this year be, how am I doing? And then rate yourself. A a and I, I give you permission for everyone else to ask them how they're doing too. Like, like we want to be people uh, that, that are really assessing the condition of our souls and working through the challenges and the obstacles. Um, so let how am I doing be the, the, the most important question you ask. There's still a lot of uncertainty in the air. Um, so press into that question. Uh, but I also want us to ask another question. How are we doing? How are, how are we doing? And so tonight, uh, we're going to conclude this series uh, for real this time. <laughs> um, but just by assessing how we are doing as a body of believers and, and find direction uh, for this year and the years ahead. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have together, both in person and online. Lord, I thank you um, that your spirit is with us, guiding us. And I invite you, Lord, to call us out into deeper waters, Lord. Call us out in our faith to take risks for you. And I pray, God, that as we talk about 
about what it looks like to be the vineyard now and in the future, God, would you put on our hearts this unified vision for your kingdom? In your holy name we praise and thank you. Amen. So, man, if I had a buck for every time this year, someone asked me, how, how are you doing? And, and not, they weren't asking me personally. They were asking, how are you doing? How's the church doing? And, and if I had a buck for every time I asked myself that, I'd have quite a savings account right now. Um, it seems like most of the questions I were, was asked um, from a professional nature this year was, how's the church doing? Like, how many people are coming? Like, how's your online services? Uh, how, how many people are watching? Like, how's your giving? Uh, you know, are, are you people connected? You know, have you lost people? Like, what's going on? Like, how do you feel? And, and, and those questions I typically would answer, we're doing okay. You know, it's challenging. It's a hard time. I think we're good. Um, but... What I would find is when I would ask that question to myself, I was a little less certain in my answer. And so, so questions would crop up, man, are we doing the right things? Are we, are we, being connect, are we connected to people? Are we going to see some of these people ever again? Are we, are we doing enough to show love for th and support to people? Are we doing enough for our community? How do we love a community when we can't even like, meet and interact with them? Like, all these questions would come and just kind of flood my mind and almost play, like, in a loop that was exhausting. And I found myself really just questioning, man, how are we doing? Things seem good, but, but is that the truth? Is that the reality, or is that my perspective? And so um, what was kind of comforting to me is every month the area vineyard pastors get together for a Zoom call, and so we're just kind of we're hashing out and talking about how we do it. And, and the comfort was that everyone felt the same. Like every pastor was asking the same question. Uh, how are we doing? I think we're okay. I, I think we're doing okay, but I, I'm not really sure. And so uh, throughout this pandemic, churches have had to reevaluate what it means to be the church. Uh, as I look back now over 2020, uh, when I can take my focus off all the just hard things and the difficult things of 2020, um, I have to say that, that I'm pretty proud uh, of the way we have handled this time, this challenge, this obstacle, as a church, as a body of believers. I mean, we, we've been stretched like every other church, um, for instance, just learning how to do online church. When, when we first like closed our doors and we had to go solely online, like I was over here talking to an iPhone taped to a mic, a mic stand. <laughs> like that was the extent of our technology. And the, the worst part of it uh, was I had to stand here. Like, we taped on the floor how far I could go. Because you know me, I'm, like, all over the place. And so, like, if it wasn't bad enough, I was talking to an iPhone taped, taped, literally taped, to a microphone stand here. I couldn't move. And so that was a real challenge. And so, and then, we, you know, developing as things kind of opened and closed and opened and closed, we had to restructure, like, frequently how we operate as a church. We had to determine what was best for our kids in our youth program. We had to, to figure out what the big obstacles were and, and how to maneuver them. We had to figure out how do you worship and wear a mask? How do you social distance in, in a space like this? All of these questions and challenges were coming up. And, and at some point in, in that time frame, at a conference, online conference I was on, they said 20% of all U.S. churches will close their doors because of COVID. And I thought to myself, oh, Lord, <laughs> like, how, do, how does that not become us? How do we prevent that from happening? And so it, it was kind of this exhausting time of, of just, like, being adaptable and flexible, yet questioning every move. But see, 
what I found when I take my eyes off of that, I'm really proud of how we navigated that as a body of believers. And I say that because when I look out, I would see the genuine love, care, and concern that people in this church showed for other people in this church and that people in this church showed for our community. And and guys, that's the bottom line in the kingdom of God, loving God and loving others. And so I cannot count the number of times that that people would contact me and say, hey, so-and-so is quarantining. How can we help them? How can we support them? How can we come around them? Hey, I I saw this is happening in, in our community. How can we support that? You know, we were super instrumental in in, um, handing out meals to the Wells Fargo school students for three months. Some people, one or two days a week, were meeting, handing out four or five hundred meals to students that needed them. When we found out that there were families still, like, families were getting laid off, there was no income, we raised in a short amount of time a bunch of money to do food boxes to give to local families in need. Someone said, hey, what about all the elderly shut-ins that are most at risk and are afraid to leave their house? And we put together sunshine boxes with puzzles and plants and things that they could take and and keep them busy during during a, a time where they could have felt very alone. And I can go on and on and on, but why I'm proud is because that's the body of Christ. That's the mission of God, loving God and loving others. And we did that. And I think we we did that well. And so I'm proud of that. Countless stories of people just reaching out in love and care and concern. What could have been a very devastating time in the life of the vineyard, especially in those times where we weren't meeting at all, we were able to demonstrate the true characteristic that God intended for his church, loving him and loving others. We maintained our focus on the important things and worked through the other stuff. So how how are we doing now? We survived 2020, which I consider a win. 2021 so far is still a little uncertain. But how do we as a church find direction in the chaos and in the obstacles and in the challenges? And so last week we looked at Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And we said last week that we are God's work of art created to do good works at this time in history. And I shared just that mind-boggling idea that God knew 2020 was coming and he chose us, you and I, to be the ones to advance his kingdom through this uncertain time. And this week, I, I just got the sense that God wanted us to lean a little bit more into that truth. So we only have this one point tonight, and you can follow in, in your bulletin. We, the vineyard, are God's masterpiece built together to do good works and advance his kingdom here and now. We, the vineyard, are God's masterpiece, built together to do good works and advance his kingdom here and now. And I want to address that we. See, the we is all of us. Anyone that comes to the vineyard, that calls the vineyard their home, you're part of that we. You're part of the we. And so... God, we are God's masterpiece. And and last week I mentioned the Sistine Chapel. And that's one of the world's, like, greatest masterpieces. And so I did some thinking about the Sistine Chapel uh, this week, and I thought, you know, it's a great work of art. Like, it's an amazing work of art. But the whole Sistine Chapel is really a collection of, of masterpieces. And so I've got a couple I want to show you. The first one is the creation of Adam. I had to crop it a little bit. (laughs) 
creation of Adam. It, it is one masterpiece that you can see in the Sistine Chapel. The next one is uh, David slaying Goliath. It's another masterpiece. Um, Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, and then, the, and then Daniel. And so all of those individual masterpieces painted by the artist individually are a masterpiece in themselves. Each, like we said last week, each of us is a masterpiece that God has made, has created. But when you take all those masterpieces, and the next uh, slide is a directory, that's all the individual masterpieces. It's a directory. So if you go there, you can get that directory and, and see your different individual pieces. But all of those individual pieces make up the Sistine Chapel, the major masterpiece. And when I say the vineyard is God's masterpiece, we are each masterpieces that God has built together to create a collective masterpiece. And what's even more amazing than that, he's taken the vineyard and he's taken every other church in Tioga County and, and he has made, taken a, ma a micro masterpiece and he's built a church and those churches together make a macro masterpiece in Tioga County. And we have been put together. We have been built together. And in Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus came and he started taking individual works of art in the form of dis the disciples and started connecting them together and building them together because what he was doing was building a church. Through the Holy Spirit, the same is true for us. He planted a vision in the Morris' head. And then he started to move these masterpieces together to create the vineyard. And he continues to move and maneuver and put this collection, this build this collection of masterpieces together that we would form this great masterpiece here in Tioga County. The Apostle Paul tells the Ephesians about their community in Ephesus. He says in Ephesians 2, verse 19, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And so Paul is talking right now to a, a, a one church. But within the church, there was a little division between the Jews and the Gentiles. And Paul's saying, yo, you know what? When you accepted Jesus, you became one. You have been built together into one collective building that houses my spirit. God is always building something to advance his kingdom. And so, so we, the vineyard, are God's masterpiece built together that we might do good works and advance his kingdom. And so in 1 Peter uh, verse two, or chapter 2, verse 9, we hear um, this, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And so part of the work that we do is to declare the praises of the one who's called us out of darkness into light. We love God. And we praise God and we proclaim him that saved us from the darkness and brought us into light. Matthew 28, 18, and we talked about this last week, uh, Jesus speaking, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth 
has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so Jesus, right before he ascends to the Father in heaven, he's with his followers and he's saying, all right, I've brought all, the, all of you together. I've built something. And now here's your task. Go advance the kingdom. Go teach what I've commanded. Go baptize. Go make disciples. And so we have been built together at this time and this place to make disciples in Tioga County, to teach the ways of Jesus to the people of Tioga County. Our advancing of the kingdom uh, from the vineyard context, com context comes from our vision statement that I'd like to read to you. It says, the vision of the Vineyard Church of Wellsboro is to become a community of biblically-based believers committed to worshiping and loving God with all our heart, mind, and strength. Through loving relationships and led by the Holy Spirit, we will learn together how to become more like Christ and compassionately extend the ministry of Jesus to those around us. We will equip believers of all ages to intentionally advance the kingdom of God in our homes, at work and school, in our communities, and throughout the world. So as this work of art built by God, that's the good works we're seeking to do. That is how we, we seek to advance the kingdom. And that's a big task. But the good news is we get to do it together. Not one of us has to have all the skills and talents needed that's why we're a collection. He has knit this church together in a way that the, the skills and the talents that we need are collective. And together, collectively, we love God, we love others, and we seek to advance his kingdom. So in the light of that truth, you and I have been put together in this place, in the context of what we call church, to do good works here and now. So not only did God look ahead to 2020 and say, hey, her and him and her and him, that's who I need as my follower in 2020, he said, her and him and her and him, I need them in this place for 2020, for this vision of advancing my kingdom. So, so I wanted to just talk a little bit the next few moments uh, about what that means, like that vision statement is, is really great to read, and there's so much good stuff in there, but what does it mean practically? What does that look like as we, the vineyard, seek to advance the kingdom of God? And so I just want to share a little bit. I'm calling it like the five to seven year dream. And so the big dream, thank you, Vanna. The big dream, when I, when I just look out and say, man, if, if things were like this in Tioga County, you know, that would be heaven on earth. And so the big dream is that, that we can regain some of the position that the church had in the community centuries ago. Now, none of us are, were around centuries ago, so let me share with you. Centuries ago, the church was the hub of the community. If there was a plague, the church became the hospital. They opened their doors and they cared for the sick. If there was a uh, tragedy, 
the church opened its doors for the community to come and grieve. In times of war, the church bells rang to alert citizens of an attack. When it was time to vote, the church was the place that people went to vote. Everything that happened in the community, the church was involved. And that today has been lost. And we won't get into the many reasons that's the case. But when I think of a dream, I think of, man, can you imagine if in Tioga County, the church regained the spot that when people were in trouble, they knew where to go. When people were sick, they knew where to go. When people had disaster, they knew where to go. When people were in hardship, they knew where to go. That's my dream. To be a place where people are seen and loved and cared for. Not just on a practical level, on a spiritual level. So that's a big dream, but how do we get there? How do we get there? Great question. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. No, so, so <laughs> what, what we're going to do is I'm going to just lay out maybe the next five to, to seven years of, of, of how I see us begin to take this dream. I may never see this dream unfold in my lifetime, but we can begin the process of that. And so I'm going to draw you a little diagram. See if I can remember it without my notes. Okay. Anyone know what that is? If you, a square. A square with a bite out of it. Arizona? Oh, kind of looks like it, doesn't it? It's not Arizona. It is Tioga County. This is a, a very rough drawing of Tioga County. Any clue how many people, as of 2019, is where my daddy came from, live in Tioga County? Oh, you're, you're all close. 40,944. Okay. So we've had a few babies born in the vineyard this year, so it's at least 47. Yeah, no. So 40,944 approximate residents in Tioga County. Of those, how many percent claim some sort of religious affiliation? Percentage. I hear some 30s. That's pretty close. 31.8% again to 2019. 31.8% claim some sort of religious affiliation. Which means, don't forget this number. Twenty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty four people claim to have no religious affiliation. Twenty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty four people who don't know the love of a heavenly father. 27,924 people, image bearers of God, walking around not knowing that they are his work of art designed for a purpose. 27,924 people who don't know that their identity has been fearfully and wonderfully made. 27,924 people with kingdom potential, just ready to be harnessed. Tioga County. Don't forget that. So in Tioga County, we have this. That's supposed to be a star. It looks terrible. What's there? Wellsboro. What else is there? Vineyard, the Vineyard Church of Wellsboro is right there. The school district of Wellsboro is 11,800 people. 
11,800 people. If we apply the 31.8%, that means 8,047 have no religious affiliation. That's a lot of people. We can't get 8,000 people in here. So when we lay out a, a five to seven year plan, the first thing, year 2021, hey, that's this year. We are really, really going to focus on this building, and this building has been somewhat of an enigma. And it's because, a lot of reasons, but because of this vision. Like, we need a space where we can open up our doors and have financial answers to hardships. To have uh, emotional answers to emotional problems. And so in 2021, our, our first real objective is we are working really hard at this building. And then the next, that could go on forever, the discussion. Shortly, we'll have a lot of information on that. But key one, we need a building. We need this hub because there's 8,000 people walking around needing to know who their heavenly dad is. Right? But it's not fair to make all, those pe all the people of Tioga County, 27,924 people, all come to Wellsboro, right? So if we draw, this is a rough, very rough sketch. This is uh, Northern Tioga School District. 14,199 14, people within that district, approximately. This is kind of Southern Tioga School District. Fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty-one. Okay, so not quite a, th a third, third, third split. All right. So, so twenty twenty-three, twenty twenty-five. The only answer is, we need a vineyard here, and we need a vineyard here, right? We need a place within these communities that people can go and get the financial help they need and the physical help they need and the emotional help they need and the mental help they need and the spiritual help they need. Twenty twenty three, I'll call it the Vineyard South, Southern region. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But in two years, two and a half years, we hope to have a vineyard site planted and moving and ready to go and minister to the community of Blossburg and Covington and Mansfield. 2025, we hope to have a vineyard going and planting and affecting the communities of Elkland and Westfield and Knoxville and Ose Osceola. I want you to remember this acronym, HELP. Because our mission, our mission, guys, isn't to have a nice little vineyard here and a nice little vineyard here and a nice little vineyard here and a nice little vineyard here. Our mission is 27,924 people. Our mission is to harness every life's potential for the kingdom of God. And I lay this out very quickly. This is a long discussion that we want a lot of people involved in because to do this and to do this and to do this takes a lot of people committed and, and willing to lead a lot of different ministries. It takes people to say, hey, I will commit to going and loving Covington and Blossburg and Mansfield. I will commit to go and love Elkland and Westfield and Knoxville because there are people there that need to know that their identity, identity is fearfully and wonderfully made, that need to know they are God's work of art. So I tell you this today so that you can begin to pray and commit to how you can be involved.
You see, one work of art alone can't accomplish this. But a collective work of art working together can chip away at this. Our mission is not about building, it's about people. And by being people that are confident in their identity as God's work of art, and being people that are passionate about the good works that we've been created for us to do, and by being resolved that our time here is for a purpose, we will begin to see God's kingdom spread out and grow. But it begins by each of us working together as one collective group. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather, Lord. Lord, I just commit this vision to you. I pray, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us in all the ways that, that we, we need to, to grow. Give us the wisdom we need to advance your kingdom here in Wellsboro, Lord. Give us the wisdom we need to advance in, into other areas of this county, Lord, so that you might be glorified and so that, that your children that bear your image, who are wandering around, Lord, wondering what this is all about, might find purpose, in you. In your holy name, we praise and thank you. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to move right into our ministry time from here. So if, if our ministry team could kind of step out. Um, and, and our ministry time is just a time set aside where we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And, and so tonight, maybe maybe this, this vision sparks sparks a fire in you or, or sparks some interest, I, I just encourage you, talk, talk to God about this. Maybe you're wondering how you can be more involved in advancing the kingdom here. Or maybe a site really is, is something that, that you've thought a lot about and, and you'd like to be involved in. Find your direction by the leading of the Spirit today and this year. And so I encourage you, if, if you need prayer of any kind, uh, seek out our ministry team. They're off to the side. They'll be willing to pray for you. You can stand and sing with this next song, or you can sit and pray quietly. Let us together find the direction that God has planted in this community, God. Help us to find the direction of growing his kingdom in Tioga County. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to move in this place. We invite you to do a work here, God, among us, Lord. Let it begin with us, Lord. Come, Lord, and, and would you revive this land? Would you revive this county, God, um, that hearts would turn to you, Lord. Wandering hearts would come home to the embrace of their loving Savior. Come, Holy Spirit.
love and Lord that you have brought us all together in this place at this time uh, for a purpose Lord and thank you that you look at us as works of art Lord created with a purpose so I pray that as we leave this place this week, Lord, open our eyes and our ears to see what you're doing all around us, God. Help us to focus on advancing your kingdom in the hearts and the minds and the lives of people we encounter day to day. In your holy name we praise and thank you. Amen. We're going to continue to keep the lights down low. So if you want to stay and pray or, or sing along, feel free to do that when you're ready to go. Uh, I just want to thank you for joining us tonight. Hope that you have